North Durham, Kawartha. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Welcome to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between viewer and entrepreneur. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and today we are joined by Taylor Vandersweet of Tailored to Nature. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So please tell us, what exactly is Tailored to Nature? Um, so Tailored to Nature is kind of a bit of a few things that I've uh, kind of started to combine. So it started with um, me kind of getting my Reiki certification. Right. Um, and Reiki is a, a healing modality, kind of a holistic healing modality. And then um, from there, it's kind of further to me doing some empowerment workshops, so teaching um, people some of the um, kind of like the learning things behind what I learned when I was taking my Reiki certification. So some of the teachings right. Right, that I found my empowerment in. So those are my workshops. And then also I've started making some candles as well that kind of further, <coughs> I'm so sorry, <coughs> that kind of further um, promote that it, intention for like healing and working with chakras and that sort of thing. So it all kind of organically grew together, but did you just wake up one morning and have an epiphany that you were going to be a Reiki <laughs> practitioner? Or how does one begin a Reiki-like business and transfer into candles? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, actually. Um, so my um, journey was kind of a little bit interesting. Um, I kind of like to say Reiki found me in a way because I had no idea what Reiki was um, about three and a half years ago. If you had to said that word to me, I would have been like, <laughs> I don't even think I pronounced it properly when I first started. Reiki? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, so I actually got um, a head injury at my previous job um, while I was just cleaning up after a retirement party. Oh. Yeah. So just something very um, freak accident, I like to say. It was just like an ashtray that I was, um, I picked up. I was cleaning up after the um, retirement party because of the nature of my work. We had to wear like um, PPE, so hard hats and okay. high-vis vests. So long story short, when I moved it, set it down, um, it hit me right on this bone behind my ear. Um, they're like the large ashtrays in front of like restaurants. Okay, so they kind of have picture. the bowl on top where people... Put they're their... kind of like a plastic bottom and then the neck gets shorter and then there's like a little hole for people to oh, put their yes. cigarette in. Oh, yes, yes, those. Yeah, they're like a heavy plastic kind of. Yes. So the weight of it swung and hit me. Um, so fast forward, um, kind of four months later, I ended up taking my Reiki, Reiki certification and... Um, I was really struggling with my head injury, so it kind of gave me this feeling of empowerment and this feeling of, okay, like, I can do this. I had had, um, I've had two previous concussions before that, and they were very different. Um, so this one, not knowing what to do and not really feeling like people were really hearing me, I was getting kind of lost in that. Um, so Reiki gave me like my empowerment back a lot of the teachings. So from that point, um, you know, kind of flash forward two years, I ended up kind of losing my job during um, due to the head injury. I just could not transition back to working surface mine work. It right. was very hard um, just with the noise and vibration. So um, I had to pivot real quick and um, Reiki was something that I knew really spoke to my heart and would kind of speak to other people. Um, so I kind of started there with sessions and it's kind of tumbled more into workshops and then the candles and it just keeps growing. So it's so a lot. <laughs> it is a lot and it's incredible. So Thank essentially you. you suffer a workplace accident that significantly impairs you from doing your job mm -hmm. to the point where you're not able to do your job anymore. So instead of sitting at home doing nothing, you kind of channeled your pain and made it your power to find this career path for yourself. I assume that you're kind of working your way through what that looks like and navigating your new normal with what your business is going to be. But to touch on the Reiki a little bit before we get into the candles, 
as somebody who has suffered an injury and is practicing Reiki, you know, how do you combat people saying, well, you're not fully healed. How are you going to heal me? I love that question so much. Um, <laughs> First of all, I am a full believer that none of us are fully healed ever. And I think that the goal in life is to kind of work towards that and to find things that make it feel like you are healing right. blocks in your lives and things that make you feel anxious or stuck somewhere. Um, so that is kind of my message as well, is that like we all can come together on these things and continue. So I see myself as a guide okay. to kind of help people transition into their kind of their own empowered healing and realize that they can do a lot for themselves as well. Like I kind of did. So <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. which is amazing because you're the guide, but you're also a motivator and somebody who influences as well, right? You're yeah. leading by example. Now, because you do suffer from post-concussion syndrome, having the migraines, do you find it hard to lead your workshops sometimes? Has there ever been a situation where you've maybe not been up to the challenge because of some symptoms you've been feeling? Absolutely. <laughs> um, that is something that I struggle with, especially for the day after I'm finding. Um, okay. Because I tend to, well, obviously when you're running an event, it's very exciting, nerve wracking. So I overstimulate myself just by being excited, being by a lot of, being around a lot of people. And so sometimes I, more often than not, the next day I need to just completely rest. Um, and that's hard. It right. is hard to get through because sometimes it is a week long. Some days I, you know, can rest for one day and I'm good to go. Um, but what I've kind of come down to is the fact that it's worth it for this job. Right. Because I love it. Um, my previous job, it was so, I couldn't do it. And I couldn't even push myself to like get there because it just didn't, I don't think it sparked that heart space kind of, you have to do this. Right. Um, so that's kind of one of my motivators, obviously the fear of like not doing it now. Um, but yeah, I just kind of, it's worth it. <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, I think every small business owner and everyone who has a career wants what they're doing to be worth it. Mm -hmm. So if this fuels that for you, that's tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did candles kind of get into the mix and these these wellness candles? H how did that all happen? Um, so candles were something that was really interesting kind of transitioning in for me. So I had started practicing Reiki um, virtually with some people while I was still trying to transition to my previous position. Um, but when I end up, ended up finally getting that, okay, like this isn't working, it's been the two year mark, you're not transitioning, I was like, oh my. You need something. What do I do? Like an unpaid, you know, whatever is very kind of scary to hear. You're gonna be unpaid, you know? Um, so I had kind of just started making candles for myself because of scents were really triggering me. So I was looking into like natural candles and making them just playing around really. Right. <laughs> I was honestly playing around <laughs> in my kitchen, I should add, um, which is very waxy stuff, but that's okay. Um, so I kind of got that, you know, that message or that kind of moment in my life where I was like, what am I going to do? And I was like, Reiki, candles, workshops, like this is, I'm just going to try and do what I'm doing right now. That's okay. bringing me like happiness at home. Sure. And let's see if we can make it be the real thing, kind of. <laughs> well, that's incredible. <laughs> so how did the whole candle operation start? Did you just continue in your kitchen and make as many <laughs> as your kitchen counter could hold and then figured out from there or what was the process? Uh, so it's been a lot of research and a lot of learn as you go. I always joke with some of my customers that, you know, I kind of started my business maybe when it wasn't like, you know, didn't have the complete vision of my product, but I was like, <laughs> we have to do this. Right. Um, so while I still knew a big portion of my heart that I wanted to go into them, it was, yeah, it was in the kitchen be using a pot like to melt my wax, wow. like one of our big soup pots. 
Um, and then when I kind of told my boyfriend, you know, like this is the real thing, like I want to do this, it was kind of interesting. We went out that weekend to the Uxbridge Farmer's Market and we found like an old oak table that was like someone had taken it apart and put it on the side of the road for like garbage or for someone to take. There were stickers on it. <laughs> and I was like, this is like beautiful. It was really heavy, but we took it home. We see it. It was like a project for us. Right. So we ended up transitioning our kind of back room into my candle studio and it never had a purpose before. So everything just kind of aligned in a way that I feel like it was like, it felt good. It felt like it was meant to be in the moment kind of. So yeah. <laughs> so you've created this candle lab in the back of your house with refurbished material yeah. and you're making it. And the candles that you make, they're, they're wellness candles or intention candles and they have crystals and flowers and essential oils. How did you figure out that whole process of what to put in the candles and <laughs> how to make these creations, if you will? So I'm only laughing because it's just been such a journey. Um, when I first started my candles, I made, I got so excited, I made like a dozen candles and I poured the wax too hot. And when you pour the wax too hot, it burns off your scent. Oh. So I wasted like, a dozen candles that didn't <laughs> smell like anything. <laughs> well, they're great if the lights go out. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, um, it's been kind of a learn as you go, definitely. Um, but I definitely have done a lot of research. I'm with, um, you know, an essential oil company now that I feel confident. I know how to add them at the right temperature. Okay. Um, so, and then with uh, the florals and the crystals, that's been something that's, the crystals have always been there. I always had that intention with the crystals um, to be in the candles. Um, a big change with the florals since I started, which has kind of opened my heart a little more to working with other um, you know, female entrepreneurs that have kind of small businesses in like floral or horticulture. Okay. So sometimes I'll go and, you know, purchase a bundle from them and dry them myself. And then I like to use those in my candles. Cause then I know, you know, where it's coming from. That kind of makes me feel a little more thankful for it. And then it's creating like a relationship between me and that other small business owner. So that is incredible. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that is a lot. And when we come back, we will get into the nitty gritty of exactly how you Perfect. built up your business to be what it is today. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hi, I'm Angel Morgan, host of Raising Energy on Rogers TV. Join us each week as we are back in the studio doing live psychic readings. I work with guides, guardians, angels, archangels. I'm a free-for-all. I even bring through animals and messages from loved ones to bring you closure. Check out rogerstv.com backslash Raising Energy for our listings and air times and for your free tickets. Hi, I'm Constable Daryl Rice, Durham Regional Police Service. Tune into Rogers Cable 10 to watch me on Seniors Talk with DRPS, where we'll talk about all kinds of amazing information and community programs for you, our seniors in Durham Region. Hi, I'm Sean Lackey, and this is Sold with Sean Lackey. You should check us out if you want to find out what's going on in the world of real estate. We'll have all sorts of guests to keep you in the loop on what's going on in this wonderful world. It isn't the heavy trays that make the job difficult or the fast pace you need to keep up. It's not working another double because someone called in sick. What makes the job tough is the moment you realize a customer has had enough and you have to make that decision not to overserve. Refusing service isn't personal, it's the law. We know it's not easy, but we're counting on you to keep us all safe. 
Thank you, servers, for doing the tough job. This is Rogers TV. Welcome back to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between viewer and entrepreneur. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and today I am joined by Taylor Vandersweet of Tailored to Nature. So Taylor, before we took our break, we were talking about how you went from Reiki to your intention candle operation. Can you explain to us how those work together? How do you practice Reiki and sell your candles? Um, yeah, so I can absolutely explain that. Um, so when I'm actually practicing Reiki, I've only ever done one actual group distance session. So okay. um, the actual Reiki um, healing sessions themselves generally are one on one. Um, but for my workshops, it was more kind of explaining, I almost want to say like the backstory behind Reiki so people could visually understand what's happening during the sessions. Because that was something I was kind of like, whoa, at the beginning, trying to visualize how this was happening. So right. like, obviously there's, I hope other people that are interested in learning that would gain something from that. So um, that's how I transitioned to the workshops was kind of just going into further learning on, um, as I mentioned, chakras, which are kind of our energy centers, which are what you're working on balancing during Reiki sessions. Okay. Okay. So without getting too deep into <laughs> it, um, what I was um, doing was relating them without getting corny, but okay. I'm very tailored to nature. Sure. <laughs> That's my business name. Um, I myself have learned a lot of my um, greatest life lessons from being outside and being with nature. Right. And so that's where my business name comes from. Love it. And that's a lot of how my teachings are kind of put forth. It's okay. all very visual. Um, so that's kind of how my workshops, what they look like, is uh, me explaining something, taking you on a little bit of a visual journey. Um, and how I transitioned the candles into that portion was um, when I first started, I was working with Gray Silo Lavender Farm, which is um, kind of in between Port Perry and Uxbridge. Okay. And um, so I had kind of asked them if it would be okay for me to sell my candles at the end of my workshops, just to offer a little bit of like a market portion, because I knew they had products and that could kind of, you know, help them. Um, and then I had another friend that was um, producing some kind of um, all natural home cleaning products that um, she was going to sell as well. So we turned it into a cool little market at the end. <laughs> That's awesome. So you go in for your Reiki session, you're connected, your balanced chakra, all that good stuff. You come out to a nice market of local goodies. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where you started to sell the candles. Yes. Yeah. Now, I've walked into a couple local stores <laughs> and seen your candles on the shelves. <laughs> How did you transition from your little local market into actual businesses within Port Perry and Uxbridge? It never gets old. It makes me even a little watery. <laughs> um, so what had happened actually um, in the summertime when I had first started my workshops, there was a local kind of vendor store that popped up in my town, Port Perry, and um, it was called the Local Port. So I immediately was like, oh my gosh, I have these candles, I'm gonna try this. So I reached out to them and unfortunately had they actually had someone in the store that was producing candles. Right. And I really appreciate the fact that they like kind of one vendor, one niche type sure. deal. So they don't, you know, they kind of offer a good variety. Um, so I was like, okay, not my time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, from that point, um, just stuck with the workshops. Okay. And then um, come October, uh, the end of October, the owner had actually reached out to me um, while I was on vacation and she was like, you know, we have an opening, do you want to be in the store? And I was like, yes, <laughs> right away, yes. Um, and we've become such good friends since that. So, And it's kind of just blossomed into me having like the courage to reach out to other, you know, local stores and asking them if, you know, they would like my products in their stores. and. Uh, a couple other vendor locations, but I like doing kind of a mix of both because it just keeps things, it keeps things interesting and fun. Definitely. Yeah. Now, when you were hosting your workshops and having your candles at the market at your workshops, I'm sure you kind of came up with a price that you felt was right <laughs> for that time. And then as you transition into the storefront, 
how did that work for you? Because that's a product of your love and passion for what you do. How do you translate that to a wholesale price? That was so hard. Um, I struggled with my prices so, so much. And um, one of the biggest things I have to give credit to for kind of my mindset around my business was um, the fact that I did an online coaching um, program. Okay. That was kind of half mindset, half kind of helping you start your business. So giving you a checklist of websites to, um, like platforms to build your website or how to, you know, how to start a email kind of drip where people are getting automatic emails, all those Marketing <laughs> confusing technical <laughs> things that I normally stay away from. Um, so one of the kind of weeks was money mindset. Okay. And that was huge because I am a, like to say, recovering people pleaser and I always just like to think, oh, well, like, you know, what would people like to pay that would be really easy for them to kind of be able to accessible to bring it home. And uh, yeah, that was a, a bit of an issue at okay. the beginning. I got into the first store, um, the local there, and I had kind of my vendor prices because it wasn't that wholesale okay. thing. Okay, wholesale so, experience. Yes, yeah, so when I had to pivot to the wholesale where someone was purchasing kind of a bulk order and it go, you have to kind of bring the price down, but then they want to, you know, they have to get their kind of revenue. their retail, sure. their, yeah, their revenue for displaying it for you. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I ended up having to do a bit of a jump in my prices and it scared me so much because I was scared that I was gonna lose some of my customers that had been with me because it was, I think a like different eight, costing. Eight, yeah, an eight dollar jump, wow. and that seemed like a, you know that was a lot. It was a lot for me, and I'm always putting myself in the shoes of someone who would be the purchase purchaser, right. kind of. Um, so I transitioned by doing a sale um, on my products. So Smart. yeah, I kind of upgraded my tins. Everything looked a little bit different, um, and I did a sale to kind of get me from A to B, and. Um, I kind of was surprisingly held by a lot of my customers that I had had. I didn't have any backlash. I think as a small business owner, we're always waiting in our minds for someone to be like, your prices are too much or, you know, yes, something. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's something, that little negative voice in your head. But um, I haven't, and I'm just so thankful for that. <laughs> That's amazing to hear. And what a interesting lesson to learn early on in your oh business, gosh, right? Yes. Because obviously what you do has value, but it is so difficult when it's a piece of your soul and you're creating it to put a price tag on that. Yes. Right? Oh my gosh, yes. So you mentioned in your answer there that you invested in a mindset program, coaching. Mm -hmm. A lot of people struggle to invest in themselves. What was that like for you to take that jump and <laughs> invest? Um, so I'll be completely honest. I struggle with that as well. I think spending, for anyone, spending a lot of money on ourselves is a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I'm not saying like it was like, you know, break the bank, so expensive, <laughs> but it was something that I had to work to pay off for a little okay. bit. And it was something that I knew that I didn't have the money you know, up front to do this, let's put it that way. Okay. Um, but I ended up having kind of the call with the coach. She did a discovery call where you could chat with her for free for 15 minutes and see if it was kind of right for you. Okay. And um, her name's Jazz. Her business is uh, Zen Row. I should mention her. She's a beautiful soul. Um, she, uh, I, don't, I just, I said yes. Like I said yes right away. And then we got off the phone and I was like, uh, what did I do? What did I do? Um, but I have no regrets. It has come back to me so many times over with my business. I don't know that I'd be sitting here with you even right. without um, a lot of the lessons that she taught me and helped to guide me through. Um, and another point I always, this is something that's come to me kind of later on, is that as a kind of a guide myself, um, you know, I'm in a place where I'm asking for people to invest their, you know, their energy and their time and their money in me. Right. And 
you know, what kind of place does that put me in if I'm asking that of my, you know, clients and guests, but I'm not willing to do that for anyone else. And that's really kind of a big kind of shift to make. Um, so you'll always get something back from it. That's what I feel. <laughs> and that's a very well-rounded perspective as well. Thank you. <laughs> I, I definitely think as a business, you want everyone to invest in you and what you're doing and your product mm -hmm. and you're a hundred percent right. If you're not investing in others and taking a chance on yourself as yeah. well, how are you expecting people to take chances on you? Yes. That's very profound. Thank very you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this mindset course, it sounds like it, inspired you to do some marketing and really build your business. So is it through this mindset course that you discovered how to build your website and market your products online and stuff like that as well? Yes, absolutely. Um, she kind of gave me like a deadline for certain things. So it was like, you need to have this portion of your business, you know, laid out kind of your vision. And then you need to have your date of when you're going to launch your website. And kind of there was like a week before where I she, even I had to start, you know, advertising oh. that I was going to launch it. It was it was beautifully laid out for me. Um, but as I mentioned, that people pleasing aspect, <laughs> um, knowing that there was someone else as well as myself that I didn't want to let down, it kept me motivated to continue and to actually work within the time frame she gave me. Right. Which I don't know if I would have done that without her. That is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> now, Taylor, do you have a trade tip for our audience today? A piece of information that you'd like to share with the world, advice somebody's given to you, or a piece of advice that you'd like to share with everyone? Um, yeah, absolutely. Just a piece of advice from myself. I would say um, the things you think about, the things that you're scared to do, but they keep coming back to you. Um, just find little ways to do the jump and make it there because those are the things I think and I believe that you're destined to do so go after your dreams without being corny <laughs> I love that you're absolutely right you're an embodiment of that in general now if people want to find you or purchase your products where do they go and so first you can find me my website is www.tailored to nature that it's a number two okay. um, I always like to mention that and then obviously I'm very active on my Instagram so tailored to nature and um, you can access kind of anywhere to contact me through those those points amazing yeah. Taylor thank you so much for joining me today this has been an awesome segment and uh, we, we really loved everything about this that has been another edition of Modern Business. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and we'll talk to you next time. Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Wednesdays on City TV. I guess it's just another day in the ED, huh? Get ready for what comes next. Ready?